band is labor and love. It's, um, I don't want to say a labor of love because it's not all labor, but it is labor and love for sure. You know, they're always pushing me to think critically about things, to write in ways that I haven't thought about before. They are pushing me to be more understanding when we come from like different views or have different stances on things. I've never been in a band like this before, um, you know, musically and, you know, as a group of people that play music together. Everybody treats them, each other like they're part of the group. I wouldn't want to be able to do this kind of thing that we're doing now with anybody else. Like I said, I mean, it's sort of hard to describe without, you know, uh, just sounding maybe overly sentimental, but, you know, I really do. I have an immense amount of love for my bandmates, and uh, that's really what I think makes it good. That's what drives uh, the music is because we all really care about each other and what we're doing. We, we share the same goal, you know, which is rare. Synchronize your watches. <laughs> it was pretty good working with Scary, honestly. Scary's spectacular. He's so knowledgeable at like what he does but he's able to just like strip things down and like into the raw components and make those raw components as loud and gainy as possible. And he heard, uh, you know, our first iteration of the record and he liked the songs enough to want to help us, you know. It's very much uh, a very, you know, beneficial working relationship that we have, you know. We became friends very quickly. Anytime that we need to record something, you know, there's no question that we like, we were going to go to Scary because not only is it a good recording environment, good equipment, um, you know, a great place to make records, but he knows what we're looking for, how to help us. And he's not afraid to get his hands dirty as well, you know, like he has some synth credits on the album coming up. When me and him were working on the synth parts together, he was right there with me trying to come up with stuff. able to kind of figure out like what our writing process was, what uh, everybody's strengths and weaknesses were, so that we're able to really hone in on that creative process. Uh, obviously Nat is really heavily influenced by a lot of harsh noise artists, a little bit more avant-garde stuff, uh, while everybody else has their own influence as well. Those things were able to come out a lot more. One of the primary aspects of our sound is definitely the noise aspect of things and getting to do that has been really fun getting to play with different sounds and palettes that are really harsh but add really interesting textures um, it's also been fun to kind of push everyone else in a way to go a little bit harsher because i've made solo noise music for several years now that's it that was good that was better honestly that was better yeah. that was a lot better God damn it, I was doing so good on that one too. One more time, let's do it again. I have three, you know, monster performers around me and I try and do everything I can to, uh, bridge the gaps between all of them. Instead of just being a guitar player and a bass player, we're kind of just playing off of one another. We can trade roles, we can, you know, times where we come together and sound like one instrument playing the same thing, you know, and when we do that, you know, it sounds like a cannon. It's like we try and have that, that, that sense of one big instrument, you know, hitting you. Um, the uglier that we, uh, make our sounds, uh, the, 
the more people seem to respond, which is, you know, nuts to me. My whole goal is to make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I want. That's uh, kind of what we all try for when we're making this stuff. I think it's a reflection of the, the way, even if people don't realize, you know, the world's so fucked right now. Maybe they hear something like that for the first time and somebody who might not ever have interacted with n noise or whatever uh, can hear that and be like, you know, that's kind of reflects how I feel. And maybe that's why people are not pushed away by it in a way that they may be used to. We found a language early on, but then the first two or three songs writing, we just became super comfortable with each other. Uh, and it, that definitely allows me to take it into areas I wasn't comfortable taking it in before. It's because I may have been writing for one specific person or trying to fit into a mold when now I can sort of create my own or like help we all sort of create the same mold together. I think I like it. I hope I like it. Yeah, let's listen, please. Woo! This is the face of a dude that's done. We were only in the studio for about three days total. It was like 36 hours total. It was like three 12 hour days, just about. I, one of those days was like eight hours of just vocal recording and all the layering. And I had a plan of like what I wanted to do. I went in, executed it for every track. And I feel like you can kind of hear that vocal deterioration over time. And I think it makes it really interesting, especially for like the conceptual version of the record. Raise awareness to these subjects that we're writing this music about. It's one of the wonderful things about Nat joining the group is that we're all passionate about what we believe and they've brought a different point of view and a different understanding to all of us and help us with a message for people, you know, not just like, I and mean, this music is intense and the lyrics that come from it are also intense because they come from that place, you know, that place from where Nat's going. The record is definitely themed. It's very much thematic about I would say marginalized groups and oppressed people in society. Uh, there was an author who wrote a lot of essays throughout the AIDS crisis whose name was David Wojnarowicz. And he has a lot of really, really important writing and we use a lot of his writing in the record. Um, we actually take the name of the record, which is Slow Murder, from an excerpt of his from an essay he wrote called Living Close to the Knives. That was something that we took a lot of influence from, and I think that narrative arc of like examining different things like, you know, shitty office jobs, to feeling like you need to snap at people who have been working against you your entire life, like people who hate you just for existing, to like criticizing police brutality or like the overarching religious cult mentality of America, and that entire thing really influenced the record. Greyface Records is such an impressive label because they're like the definition of a cult classic of a label. They've been around for 20 years this year. They have so many bands who have so much notoriety and cult status. Maybe sonically we don't necessarily fit in. Greyface is very much not restricted to a sound. They're very much explorative of whatever they believe in. And so working with Ryan and Greyface has just been an immense privilege. They also have a ton of heritage in the Savannah community because they've had their like stationed record store here for 11 years. I mean, they're a huge part of the scene. They're one of the only people who's really advertising indie music or like alternative music here in Savannah. You know, you are you move to a place and you try and find the, the holdouts for, for music and everything. Uh, I, you know, you realize pretty quickly, even before I lived here, I, I knew that Greyface was 
something in Savannah uh, as far as the record store goes that was really important. I didn't know the extent of them putting music out for people at the time as a label. It's very validating. It's very cool to uh, you know feel like uh, we have him and Chloe, like I said, in our corner. The two of them do a lot for the city. The one thing that I want in life the most is to be able to share audience connections. You know, just being able to have that communication between an audience as a performer. If there's like a piece of music that you become really fond with, it attaches itself to you and it's something that you can relive and relive and relive over your life. To be able to have that kind of connection with an audience member, um, large or small, is really, really important to me. I think that there is absolutely nothing that can be a good live performance. I feel like if you have the energy, if you have the presence, the talent, everything like that, the skill to really pull it off, and do everything all together in a way that really impacts people, really moves people. That's something that I think is way special. They feel very moving and we have people who come up to us after every set and they're either like, you know, oh, I'm LGBTQ plus in this way or someone related to me is and this meant a lot to me or them. Or having people be like, I was raised religious and it caused me to have a lot of self doubt and everything that you guys said about that really opened my eyes and really like, helped me feel assisted to that. And we have people who come up to us and they're like, oh, were you raised like evangelical or were you raised Lutheran or something like that because of our references? And it's just like, no, we were all raised in different denominations and everything, but we all have very jaded experiences with it because of all the different things we were raised in. While you can kind of get that kind of impact from a record, it's definitely not as tangible as it is live. To go to a city that we've never been to before and have people be excited to hear us play is like, you know, it's it's an incredible feeling. And so we want to, tr you know, make sure that people understand we're super grateful for any anyone who comes out and gets that, you know, that one on, not one on one, but that group experience in a live setting. It's completely different from just listening to a record. And especially with the way that we perform, it's, um, very, very different from listening to us recorded. We also want to have people not feel separated from us. That's really important too, you know. Um, I try to set up on the floor of whatever room we're playing, so does Nat, you know. Uh, stages are great, but um, I like to be around. I like to use the space. And it changes the per people's perspective on the show when somebody's six inches in front of your face we're all kind of in it together and makes it feel like a more collective experience.